Welcome everybody to ED Chat. Thank you so much. Listen, I would love if you would let me know where you live and give me one or two key words that describe what you do, who you help, you know, for example, veterans, homeless. So you do that, type it in the chat room. That would be great. And thank you all for coming. Those of you who are off camera, you're not showing up on the screen, but thank you all for being here as well. Awesome, thank you everybody. Come on in, Vermont, PG is from Vermont, sports to help people with disabilities. Thank you, I have a disabled sister. Thank you so much for doing that. Dawn from Akron, Ohio, Family Service Agency, beautiful. Kimberly, um, Wisconsin, we're training. Oh, it's going so fast now. Okay, I gotta keep up. Resource Center, okay, RK from Seattle, Washington. Claudia, Napa Valley, domestic violence. Jody, um, Community Foundation. Oh my goodness, it's coming in so fast. Hi, Eli, thank you for joining us. Amy, Assistant Living in Michigan, awesome. This is so fantastic. We got Jean, oh, Janine, I should know that. That's my middle name. I love that name from Texas. How are you? Humane Society, thank you for taking care of our animals. I have a golden doodle, so I love animals. BJ in New Jersey, medical nonprofit. Oh, I'd love to hear more about that. This is fantastic, Angie. Um, Ohio Community Action Commission, love it. Yuri, thank you for spelling that out for me. Uh, New Mexico, bring international um, emergency, emergent leaders from around the world. Wow, thank you. Emmy Williams from North Carolina, mental health. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mental health is so much needed right now, especially during this COVID season. John from French, I don't know, this, I guess it's from France, culture and heritage. You know, there's people from around the world that will be on here today. Um, Louisiana, Amanda from Louisiana. Wow, um, Dr. Trish from Tennessee. Memphis, I have some friends there, Hope for Healing, Counseling, all right. Uh, hey, Nicole, thank you for joining us. Amanda in Louisiana, I think I said that. A law Lab, need that, always need that. Wow, okay, if you see anybody that's in your city, make sure you connect with them, send them a, you know, a chat individually and make sure you connect them. You know, ED Chat is all about us connecting with each other. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Just a moment, share my screen so I can just get into a little bit of housekeeping real quick. Thank you guys, continue to um, mention where you're coming from and the type of nonprofit that you serve. One second. I'm gonna move this chat over so I can continue seeing that part. Yes. All right, everybody can see my screen, right? Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Continue to chat. Let us know where you're coming from. One or two keywords that describe what you do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I want to welcome everybody to ED Chat. We are so glad you are here. So, so glad. Again, continue to type in where you're coming from, um, the type of nonprofit that you have, one or two words that describe what you do. Just want to uh, let you all know, when we thought of ED Chat, we thought of this is a place that we can bring EDs together. Um, you could be a board member, executive director, or decision maker to talk about technology and other tools that you use to advance your mission, but it's going to be much more than that. You'll see. We're going to, we're going to talk about things that affect all of us today to day. I'm Aretha Simons from TechSoup. I'll be your host today. I'm a TechSoup, TechSoup webinar producer and the TechSoup Community Connect organizer here in Orlando, Florida. So you didn't know I was right here in Orlando. Hope somebody's in Florida. Put in the chat room. Let me know if you're in the Central Florida area. I've been a nonprofit executive director. I've helped people start their nonprofit. I've been a grant writer, a grant reviewer, a board member. So I've worn many hats as you do. And so I understand um, what you're going through. I understand some decisions you have to make. And I just want to let you know that we are all in this together. So before I go on, I do want to let you know, for those of you who are new here at TechSoup, welcome, because some nonprofits have just started, they're just joining. TechSoup is much more than a tech marketplace where you can get some awesome deals on hardware or software. We have an online and an offline community where we foster collaboration and peer learning in our nonprofit communities. 
We have technical support. I don't know if any of you have taken advantage of our technical support, but if you um, downloaded G Suite, I had somebody call me and say, hey, I have a problem with my G Suite. You can, have, you can call TechSoup and we can help you with all that. Plus, there are so many extra resources, our blogs. I read our blogs every day. We have some excellent writers. A lot of them have journalism degrees. Um, the webinars, the articles, all, most of this is free. The courses, when you finish with ED Chat, make sure you go on and sign up for the courses. Most of them are free, as I said. Plus, we have our apps for a good division where we collaborate with experts who develop apps that create relevant solutions to help communities around the world. And now we have ED Chat, where it is all about you. So I wanna do a little bit of housekeeping before I start. Everybody is on mute. I will ask you to unmute yourself or we may unmute you. I have Nicole working behind the scenes. Thank you, Nicole. We'll unmute you if we have a question or you wanna dive in and speak live. When you do, state your name. Um, the type of nonprofit you have, and then you know, give us an answer in you know one to two minutes because we want to give everybody an opportunity to speak. If you don't want to speak live, then continue to engage with everybody right in the chat room. Um, everybody is welcome to speak. We want to bring our best, our kind self in the chat room. So make sure that we are um, holding ourselves accordingly. Listen, I'm gonna be quick and tell you more about ED Chat. I wanna pause for a moment because we keep saying that this is about you and it is. We, every day we're talking about how can we help nonprofits and you do so much in the community and it's, it's, it's okay to come, this is kind of like our community, our club today, if you will. It's okay to come and just let your hair down just for one hour of come and chat about, you know, things that, going on in your nonprofit, somebody may say one word that could change your day today or give you one tool that you can walk away and put in your toolbox. So that's why we committed, um, created this community. And as you were coming in, you told me the you know nonprofits that you help or the individuals in the communities you help, disability, the law lab, um, animals, there's so many, I can go on and on. But the bottom line is that we are all in this together. And when it comes to doing good, none of us have, have to compete. So I hope you have your coffee, your water, your wine, whatever, wherever you are, it's five o'clock somewhere. And you can sit back and relax and take this time to just soak it in and connect with other executive directors and decision makers. So as I said, we are all in this together. So we would love for you to invite other EDs to the conversation and I know a lot of you sign up to become a featured nonprofit. I will be reaching out to you this week because we want you to come on and do our SWAT challenge, not squat challenge, our SWAT challenge, the SWAT analysis challenge, your SWIN, weakness, opportunities, and threats. We'll get more into that um, at our next AD chat. And then I'll reach out to the ones who um, asked to be featured speakers. And of course, we want to hear from you. What are some of your ideas of what are some of the things that you want to chat about? Why don't you go ahead and put that in the chat box? What are some of the topics that you would like to chat about? Let us know. When you um, finish this chat today, there'll be a survey that'll go out. We want to know um, what things you want to hear. Good, time management. Jared is saying time management. Caitlin saying uh, strategic planning. That's a big one. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. That is a big one because and that's one of the reasons why we're doing the SWOT analysis. It's gonna help you with um, CRM. A lot of people are saying CRM, tools for communicating with residents. Oh, that's good. Offering employees, um, health insurance. Wow, keeping mentally, people mentally engaged. Great. Staff retention, big one. Oh, we gotta, we gotta bring some experts. And some of you may be experts in these areas. Let me know. Email me, um, webinar at techsoup.org. If you're an expert in this area, um, because like I said, all of you wear different hats. So we want to know some of the hats that you wear. You may be, some of you are lawyers, you all, all different types of people. You don't just serve the community in one capacity. So let me know. Wow, this is um, a lot of great topics. Reasonably priced telephone options. Hmm, telephony, I don't know what that means. Telephonic, you got to let me know, Becky, what that one is. A lot of people saying strategic planning. 
this is great, good information. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, you know, there's this host on um, television. Everybody know who she is. She's always saying, how you doing? And that's what we wanna know today. We wanna know how you are doing. How are your board members? How are your volunteers? Would someone like to come off mute? Um, do, do me a favor, go in the reaction section and press um, raise your hand, do the raise your hand button. I don't see the raise your hand button. There it is. Yeah, press the raise your hand button and let us know um, how you're doing. How have you managed through this pandemic? I mean, what's changed for you? Nicole, if you see anyone that would like to come on, you can unmute them. So people have to unmute themselves. Um, if they okay. want to come off, I do see some hands. I okay, see great. Uh, starting I see with hands. Trish. All right, Trish. Thank you, Trish. Hey, hey y'all from Memphis. We've switched to a completely virtual setting because during the pandemic, some of our clients didn't want to come into the office. So we've done that and then it's turned into now they demand nothing but virtual. So it's been kind of good because our overhead is a whole lot less. So Tris, let me ask you, are you obviously you're using Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. Zoom, uh, phone calls, okay. text messaging, things like that. Have you, you all know that Zoom is one of our partners so you can get a discount on Zoom. So I, if you don't know, I hope you do take advantage of that. Yes, we just paid, well, we paid for a full account. My Rotary Club paid for a full account in December. And then I noticed, what well, a couple of weeks ago on TechSoup that it was, what, $59 for a year? And I went, what? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Always, always check with TechSoup whenever you guys are interested in any kind of technology. Again, we're not just software or hardware, computers. There is so, there's over a hundred partners that, you know, come to TechSoup and say, hey, we want to make sure we get this to nonprofits. So I see Jerry with your hand raised. Jerry, how's it going? Wonderful. Thank you very much. I'm a um, pastor of a, a small Baptist church in Orion, Illinois. And, um, so far, you know, every every week, because of the pandemic, every week is different. Yeah. Every week, you have to you have to change up some some way to try to keep up with the the demands of the of the government that's that's uh, that's send, sending out all the different uh, requirements, but also to meet the needs of the congregation yeah. and uh, you know stay within the Stay within the boundaries that we that we have, and not, you know, and, and try to stay keep that engagement. And so that's been very very challenging over this last year for sure. Praise the Lord, we've been growing even amidst the cha challenges. And this has caused a lot of the churches to step out of their comfort zone so to uh, to engage technology a whole lot more, especially. And so, yeah, TechSoup has been a good partner of ours for a long time. The only challenge I've had in the last year was was trying to understand how to install Microsoft Office 2019. That's been a very big challenge. Now, aside from that, I'm very happy with TechSoup. Uh-oh. Well, as I said, we have technical service. Thank you for letting us know that. You can always call. We have experts. You can have one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of people don't know that. They, you think you can just download the information and you're on your own. No, we want to help you. We can help you walk you through it. We're here to help. And, I'm and glad I have you utilized TechSoup's uh, $30 installation support. It's awesome. just, uh, it, it, it's still just so, and I compliment you that you guys put that in place, recognizing the challenge that Microsoft has presented us now to capitalize on the, uh, on, on the Microsoft Office product. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for letting us know your pastor. I know that a lot of pastors and a lot of organizations have had to make the shift. If we were used to doing everything face-to-face -face, and then we are forced now to use technology, we're forced to Zoom, we're forced to make those phone calls um, and technology is not gonna go anywhere. So we we all have to make a shift and then catch up because it's just, it's just growing so fast. So I see Jim, Jim, hi, you can unmute yourself. Sure. Hi everyone. Hi. Um, I'm Jim, I'm in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, up by Lake Superior. And uh, you just touched upon something. We're, we're a health conversion foundation. So we provide 
health grants all across the Upper Peninsula. But you just touched on something that I would like to expound upon, and it, it is the use of Zoom, GoToMeeting, and all of these different platforms. And what I'm really concerned about are two things. Number one is I'm concerned about Zoom fatigue. Mm -hmm. That is just real now. I, I've noticed more and more over the last couple of months, it's more difficult to keep people engaged on Zoom calls. They're preoccupied. They're leaving. They're not engaged. And then the second part of what I'd be interested in learning from other directors is when we get back to, you know, so-called normal, whatever the definition of normal is, um, I still think the element of face-to-face -face is incredibly invaluable. And I, I guess I'm a little bit worried that we've fallen into this false sense of security that we can rely on technology, but yet for many of us who work with with donors the the face to face contact is incredibly important yeah oh you you said a lot there um i i have some answers anybody else want to chime in um and i see yuri and becky i'm going to come to you in a moment anybody want to chime in um susan you want to answer jim I, as as you guys are raising your hand i will say that yes zoom fatigue is real however um we know zoom is not going anywhere but there are many other platforms that are developing that is different from Zoom, um, where you can still have that face-to-face. -face. Um, Zoom is being used in a medical field for your counseling sessions to talk to your doctors. And so we know um, techno this sort of technology, and, and we're hearing the word hybrid, where people are going to go do face-to-face -face sometimes and sometimes online, but we know it's not going to go anywhere. Um, Becky, I see you um, have your hands raised, and then I'll go to Yuri and then Susan. Hi, Becky. Hi, I'm in the Seattle area, um, east side of Lake Washington. Um, we actually had a virtual office before the pandemic, and we were able to hold a virtual auction with Donor Perfect Ready Set Auction. Nice. And we hosted a virtual holiday tour, and we made money, and we did all our meetings online. So we've made we've made great strides. And, uh, had connect, you know, connectivity. We had social hours, trivia, bingo, and so that helps. But I'm, um, I'm looking for telephony options that are reasonable. What is that? Gonna... You we wrote that in, and I was like, what is yes. that? Well, telephony is, you know, telephone service. I need, I need a virtual telephone. We don't want to change our phone number to go to Google Voice, for example because we have it on all our printed material, all our websites, everything. So I, I'm looking for something that will allow us to keep our phone number mm. and yet to work an, on a mobile app and on a laptop. Okay. Someone so just said in the chat room, you can use phone.com. Grasshopper. Does it allow us to use our existing phone number though? See, that's a problem. I don't, we can't change our phone number. Um, I need Laura to be able said, to port it. Laura said, yes, you can. Okay, phone.com. Mm -hmm. phone.com this okay, is great thank you this is great and someone said you can port bondage so there are many other people great ideas you guys um yuri how are you and how's it going hello and thank you so much for the opportunity i'm in albuquerque new mexico beautiful land of enchantment and as you mentioned you know each one of us we have totally different programs and struggles that we're going through. Yes, Zoom is not going anywhere. And for example, I started as executive director of this organization a year ago before the pandemic started. So I started in January and all of a sudden in March, you know, we went to the lockdown and we have to switch everything to virtual. So one of my main problems that I'm dealing with right now is having a strong CRM and so I used to have three staff members and now it's just doing everything by myself. Wow. So even though that we are not receiving, of course, uh, so just really quick about the organization. So, you know, I can, of course, uh, have other people talking is that we bring emerging leaders from around the world or main funds come from the State Department. They've had this program for the past 80 years with the State Department bringing you know, emerging leaders and doing best practices in different cities around the US. So we're doing everything virtual, actually. You know, we continue having the programming virtual, which it has so many challenges. And thank you, actually. I do have the Zoom 
uh, and I purchased it through you guys. So thank you so much for that. So that's saving me a lot of money. But now it's kind of like getting ready with everything that is happening and, and doing the programming with my international visitors and because we have the State Department, we have the interpreters and, you know, everybody else, liaisons. And, but yeah, so CRM for me in particular is kind of like it's been really struggle just to find the right tool where I can combine everything. You know, I can combine my, the software that I can plug my members and I can have MailChimp, which that's what I use. So kind of like having everything combined. So thank you. You're thank welcome. you for the opportunity. You're welcome. We do have some CRM um, platforms here and a lot of people are typing in the chat room, Salesforce, we offer Salesforce, but that'll definitely be a topic that we will definitely cover. A lot of people, customer relations management, because some people don't know what CRM means. So yes, thank you, Kimberly and, and Nicole for putting that there. Susan, how are you doing? Oh, am I? Yes. <laughs> I am uh, trying to keep up. I, we're, we're doing two things with my organization. One is uh, continue, continuing to support a women's center in Nairobi. And the other is to reinstate the Oakland Women's Center in California as a virtual entity. And I'm not quite sure about how to do that yet. But my, my main area of concern right now is trying to get my board engaged in fundraising. Mm. It's been pulling teeth. Yeah. It's talking around the issue and uh, I'm not really sure anymore what to do. Wow. I, I definitely can um, have some thoughts, but how, what other, what advice would you all give her as executive directors? Because I know that's like the number one um, topic, board engagement. How are you keeping your board engaged? And sometimes, you know, um, you have to know when to fire them. Am I wrong for saying that? Type in the chat room. Carol, <laughs> thank you, the same problem. <laughs> um, fire them, right. Yes, how are you keeping <laughs> uh, Dr. Sean said, not wrong at all. <laughs> you need a new board. People are saying, you need a new board. Some people are saying, this is my pain. Um, not wrong at all. Okay, I'm gonna um, unmute April. April, I know you're not on camera. I'm going to unmute you. So I hit the X unmute. And how are you doing, April? Can I ask a question first? Yes. You know, you made the, somebody said fire them. It isn't an executive director's uh, prerogative to do that. Well, every, there's different types of boards, the way the board is structured. So you have to look at your bylaws. What does your bylaw say okay. about, you know, getting rid of people, resignations and things like that. So you have to look at the way your bylaws are structured. Bylaws are very important. You're welcome. Didn't You're occur welcome. to me. <laughs> yes, yes. So April Havlin, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. You can- Yes, uh, that- I. Well, the pandemic has been a difficult situation everywhere, but we were in America with victims of human trafficking. And so many of our women um, don't know how to read and write. Um, they started in the brothel when they're five or 10. And so they never went to school and don't know how to read and write. Many of them don't have a smartphone. And so we have WhatsApp groups in Nicaragua and Honduras. Uh, but the only country that we, we work in Bolivia, we work in three countries. Bolivia is the only country where they had Zoom or understood Zoom and could use Zoom. So I definitely have been doing a lot of Facebook Messenger, you know, that the technology and the internet, you know, it's expensive to buy a data plan for your phone, even just for a day, or even, you know, they'll buy 30 minutes worth of data. And, you know, you can't communicate a lot with no data. And so um, the biggest challenge has been helping the leaders in each country um, to, to, uh, help the people on the ground. It's, it's been a very big challenge, but I, I spend a lot of time uh, talking to the, the staff and the volunteers in different countries, um, but it's hard from when, you know, I couldn't travel until October and get to any of the countries when March hit. So that was a challenge, but one of the things that on the lookout for, and I was wondering if anybody in this chat room might know, um, we have trouble in both Honduras 
um, and Nicaragua with children that still are, go are trying to go to school virtually not having a, a, a device. So we're looking for used cell phones, uh, you know, smartphones or tablets that we could source to help the students be able to stay in school because many of the kids had to drop out of school and lose their whole school year because they had no access to a smartphone and they had no Honduras now has free Wi-Fi for students in, in elementary and secondary school, but you have to have a device. If you don't have a device, you can't do it. We had like seven children with one cell phone that wouldn't hold its charge. So they're all sitting around on the floor with a phone plugged in trying to do their schoolwork in one household. It, it, it's, it's a big challenge. So. Wow. Does anybody, anybody know, um, uh, somebody said they love Zoom. I don't know, it's, but it's spelled differently, XOO for transferring funds internationally. Okay, so, but there might be, um, yeah, it is spelled that, X-O-O-M is a great option, Yuri. So Yuri, you can chat individually um, with April if you know of any other resources that she can use. And thank you, April. I see um, uh, RK, uh, your hand is raised. Uh, can you unmute yourself, please? Let us know how you're doing. Hi, my name is Rizwana. And can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, um, I represent the Seed of Life Foundation. We actually started in January of 2020 and we didn't realize the COVID was gonna hit us. Uh, but it, uh, we, we create awareness regarding nature, deforestation, deforestation, the importance of um, trees and conserving wildlife. We taught, we, started as a hobby and then um, because of 2020 we went full-time and we work in U.S. as well as Af in Africa and around Kenya and we have volunteers and we um, go to the schools that are underprivileged in those towns and educate them because they really heavily um, depend on um, cutting the trees for um, fires and destroying that. So we go there virtually and we have also volunteers over there and we provide education, train them. And then in their schools, we plant a school garden and they're all edible foods such as vegetables and fruits. So then the children get the chance to take care of it and whatever comes out of that, it provides the community empowerment independent of the government funding. Well, thank you for sharing that. Jim, I see you You put your hand back up, am I right? Or you just didn't lower it? <laughs> okay, I think you just didn't lower it. Um, is this Shalina? Did I say it right, Shalina David? Yeah, it's close, but it's okay. It's a hard name, it's Shalini. Shalini, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> thank Hi. you. Hi, I just wanted to um, just respond. Uh, I forgot I, the lady's name that was talking about the board engagement. If I could just answer that, if that's okay. Yes, please. Um, so just from my experience, I'm not an expert, but um, when, when it comes to like the termination part of it, I found for in my experience, it's easier to, instead of terminating, it would be better to do something like term limits. If you set term limits in your bylaws, then every three years or two years, however you set it, it's automatic that board member rotates out. And so it's easier than terminating it. And what I do, especially for board members that are involved, I don't, even when that term limit ends, if I have, they have to step out, I ask them to join the advisory board because they have a lot of input based on their experience on the board. Because you don't wanna put a bad taste in their mouth also, because even if they're not supportive right now, they could be supportive in the future. So for termination, that's just been my experience, but for the getting them engaged, um, some of the things I do is I try to keep them abreast of what's happening. Cause a lot of times, you know, you might have a board meeting like once a year or twice a year, once six months or every other month. And they really don't know what's happening in the day to day. So if you do like, um, uh, if you're, uh, if you're religious based or whatever, you do like a prayer request once a month when something crazy is happening. Or I also have like a management committee just based on volunteers and they kind of help me with decisions on the day-to-day -day operations. And so they know what's going on in the day-to-day -day, and that just helps them 
feel the urge to fundraise a little more because they know what's happening and they know the day-to-day -day needs. And even within the management committee, we might meet once in three months or once every other month, just based on an issue. But those committee members have agreed to sit on a weekly, so it rotates, so nobody's overburdened. But one person, maybe for a month or two months, will have a once a week meeting with me and my person in Uganda, my manager, and will be directly hearing what are our issues. And so that helps them really feel connected. And the other thing, I felt the same way you felt with the fundraising at one point. And, but what I came to learn is that it's okay if they're not all involved in fundraising because one board member might bring in a lot for fundraising and one might not, but that person might give you some advice and bring a skill set in or knowledge that your other board members are not bringing you. And that's valuable too. So you might be able to get maybe that engagement for fundraising within your volunteers and your donors, and then kind of see what you want from each board member and then just kind of take it at that. Like, um, it, but it, it's what you value, it's what you need. You made some great, great points. I'm gonna um, let Ruth and Maurice speak in a moment, but I did wanna say that, you know, get, getting the board members engaged, um, I don't know how many board members you all have, but trying to call each one individually or setting up monthly meetings. If you had a platform where you can talk to them simultaneously, that's what technology is for, like using um, Slack, a Slack, an app called Slack, we'll put it in the chat room, or using um, some other platforms like Asana, where you can see their progress and what they've done, what they've completed, or if they're engaged at all, you can see if they logged in. That way, that's one of the ways you can keep track of people and you know how they're being active. So Maurice, you had your hand up. I'm gonna let you speak and then I'll go to Ruth. Maurice Lawyer. Okay. Yes, I'm here. I'll unmute and I'll start my video. Hello. Um my name is Maurice Lawyer. Let me see if I turn it this way. My name is, I'm on the tablet, so excuse me. My name is Maurice Lawyer, and I am the um, executive director of the Legacy Foundation here in South Carolina. And um, just quickly, one way I keep my board engaged is I really don't bother them. <laughs> um, I talk to them when necessary. I try not to inundate them with emails or contacts. Um, just kind of, you know, give them updates and meet when necessary. Um, cause not every, you know, topic deserves a zoom call. I can just shoot a quick email and, um, we don't have to worry about, you know, burdening them with, um, uh, all that, but, um, anyway, we're doing okay. Um, we had to learn a lot really quickly, um, because our organization is fairly new. We've only been, um, established for about four years. So, um, we started out with the idea of taking elementary school kids on field trips that they would not otherwise be able to be able to afford. Um, and different learning opportunities outside of the standard curriculum for our school district. We focus primarily on third, fourth, and fifth graders. Um, but when COVID hit, all of that stopped, obviously. So we had to pivot and reimagine how we could be of service. Mm -hmm. So we started um, doing, and our Strengthening Families program as well had to go virtual. So we started offering our Strengthening Families program virtually for the families. Um, we then created a virtual tutoring program for third graders that focused on reading and literacy, um, well, reading, literacy, um, uh, and math. And we were able to serve about, uh, we were able to serve 40 students at our two campus, elementary school campuses. And we were um, awarded a grant to actually pay our tutors. So that was really important because we were then able to add some supplement income into, you know, some of these households. So, um, Thank it's just been really rough, but we're doing okay. Good, good. A lot of people going virtual. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, Ruth. How are you doing? Hi there. First of all, thank you so much for doing this. This is wonderful to have an opportunity to meet people that we probably never would have an opportunity to meet and to see how many amazing things are happening in our world, especially nowadays. Yes. So I run a small um, nonprofit. I live in Northwestern PA, but the nonprofit actually serves orphans and vulnerable students in Kenya and in India. Oh. And to answer, I think it was April who was asking about board engagement. I'll just throw in my two cents, which is similar to what a few other people have said too. Um, you know, let them kind of rise to the top 
but at the same time, create that, you know, create that space, but definitely look for opportunities for them to engage. Um, one of the board members has, the fundraising board member on our um, board has always said that the entire board is the fundraising committee. And that's a good thing to bring to their attention that everybody who's on the board serves in that capacity um, and has that. And there are lots of different ways to fundraise. It's not always just about money. It's, it's you know, helping to stuff envelopes. It's, there's a lot of different ways to engage. So as far as this pandemic is concerned, like everybody else, we've been doing everything virtually. Um, I have not met with my board. We've been around for 10 years and we kind of stopped having meetings in-person meetings about five years ago. So we're very um, used to meeting online and it's, you know, it's hard. We try to meet in person at least once a year. And of course the pandemic stopped that. But I have a question for um, anybody out there who is serving populations internationally. And my question is, has to do with meetings with staff members overseas. We've tried a variety of, of platforms and you know sometimes we hit it right with Skype and then other times it's no, let's go to Facebook Messenger. Um, and it's, it's pretty frustrating when, because our, my staff is um, in a rural part of Kenya, Western Kenya, and it's just, it's kind of, in a way it's kind of hit or miss. Skype seems to be the best options so far but um yeah whatsapp we've used that before i see somebody rk is saying and facebook messenger we use that as well but does anybody have any other platforms that they've used that seem to work really well i see whatsapp and and yes we do we have used that and it does work well in kenya you're right thank you susan awesome you guys continue to type in your answers and thank you ruth yeah sure Thank you again for doing this. Um, you're welcome. Um, Jenny and then Alex. Hi, thank you so much, Aretha, for inviting us. We appreciate it. Uh, I am with FCAP. We are headquartered in Atlanta. We are the Fellowship of Christian Airline Personnel. We serve on each of the continents right now. Um, so we, our major issue is time zone changes. Um, you can imagine a lot of our airline personnel are down right now. We are serving a very diverse, uh, both, both, amongst our religion as well as amongst cultures um, and then amongst job groups as well. So it's, it's getting more diverse. Zoom mm -hmm. has absolutely been integral. We've actually had more connectivity in 2020 using Zoom than we were um, doing in-person meetings. So I can tell you that. So people can make time for an hour long Zoom meeting. I wanted to speak real quickly to the board issue. One of the ways, um, I was brought on and I noticed that there was a big gap in uh, communication between the board and the staff uh, that the board only came once a year. We only kind of spoke to them catch as catch can. We did something called the self audit of common standards for US nonprofit organizations. You can find it at Calvin Edwards and Company, uh, CEC, Calvin Edwards and Company. And I'll type it into the chat when I'm done. Um, uh, when we let the board know that we as staff were doing this common audit, we found we were net, um, deficient in about 49 points. It took us a full year, uh, 12 months to do that. One of the many things that we needed to address was having quarterly board meetings, having monthly staff financial meetings. And in this way, we began having uh, not required monthly leadership meetings of which the board were also some of our volunteer local group leaders internationally. And what this did was bring more communication. They had a better understanding of all the various tasks that the staff had to do. And, and we kind of left also a vacuum for them to kind of fill in. We gave each of our board members call lists. They each have like 10 people to call around the world of leadership uh, and uh, to stay in touch. So we gave them jobs to do. And um, I just wanted to share that with y'all and hope that some of those ideas would be helpful to you. Thank you. That was fantastic, Jenny. That was fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. My pleasure. Uh, Alex, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Great, great. Awesome to hear. Uh, so I am um, an IT director for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Mercer County. And we are uh, full, fully back in person. And I just wanted to say kind of before I dive into what I do, um, that 
I noticed that a lot of the, the people on this call are, are, are very experienced working in nonprofits. And I just kind of wanted to share that I'm about four months um, new into my first nonprofit. So, um, so that being said, I just wanted to say that I have a lot of respect for each and every one of you because I've pretty much seen firsthand how many different hats you have to wear just to make ends meet, to get the job done. And uh, it, it's definitely not a, a walk in the park. So, so yeah, I just want to let you all know that. And uh, that being said, when the pandemic started, the Boys and Girls Clubs, which is traditionally uh, recognized as being an after-school program for kids in underserved communities, um, transitioned more into a, a fully functional school, really. And uh, basically, what when we usually had programs run from like I guess like after school from like uh, two o'clock onwards, would net was now becoming an eight a.m. to five p.m. Um, type of school where we would provide kids with meals, high-speed internet, and basically give them everything they need to, to succeed during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So uh, that being said, it, it presents a lot of challenges because um, a big question is, well, how do you sort of raise the money and pay for um, faster internet for a site? And uh, TechSoup is actually an amazing resource we use because all the money that we save um, is, is directly put into um, making a function of our business go smoother. And, um, and, and those discounts are, are, are huge for us. So, um, so really, I, I, I can't say enough how much of a, of a saving grace it's been from us, especially from the more technical side of things. Um, and then I guess my, my question for everybody is, um, especially the ones that have been in nonprofits for a while, is how do you typically avoid burnout? Because I've seen a lot of people easily put in 50 hours plus every week to make things work. So I just thought I'd ask that question to everybody. Wow, thank you for, and I'm echoing what you said that thank you for everybody for what you do. Um, that was a great question. I'm going to uh, let, I see Howie has his hand raised and then Janine will be after him. Okay, well, first of all, on the issue of board engagement and fundraising, uh, I work, um, I'm a junkie on this stuff. 40 years as a professional in nonprofit organization I currently am the director of a zero interest loan fund that's based in San Antonio and serves a 16 county area. As a volunteer, I'm the president of the board of a parochial school in town, which by the way, um, while we pivoted and Zoom was indispensable, of course, as a way to educate our kids, Unlike the folks that are working in certain rural and or international locations, we were able to make sure people had connectivity and our teachers were actually trained two weeks before we had a shutdown in March. Um, so we pivoted very easily. We started school in August and only missed one week after winter break this year because a couple of families kind of let down their guard, went away on winter break. And, and then ended up um, testing positive. So we had an abundance of course and closed the school for a week. Want me to put on headphones? So my, my piece on board fundraising, every organization I've ever worked with has had a give or get, and that's critically important. I heard it earlier that there are different things that board members bring to, a, to their work. And fundraising is a responsibility of the board. End of story. If somebody isn't willing to at least acknowledge that, then perhaps they're not appropriate for your board. Um, because at the end of the day, how do we survive? How do we provide the services that we do? So that's critical. And the issue of burnout, um, I found, and again, remembering at this point, I'm no longer working in a national or international basis, but for local, I find that the electronic connecting has actually enhanced our success in fundraising and in engaging the board members. Why? Because it, you know, people have busy lives. And while we're not dealing with time zone issues, we are dealing with scheduling. And so when we kind of say, we're going to meet, and then meetings go, it's 45 minutes or an hour, end of meeting, you know? So you have that expectation, you start on time, there's no distractions and you get to the business. Look, board service is two things. It's, it's the work of the organization and there is a social component. So you have to 
you have to at least take that into consideration, get the stuff done. And when we can get back safely to meeting in person, um, build in those social elements once or twice a year, a gathering or something like that. But for me, in the work that I'm doing, uh, God bless electronics. And thank you all for, uh, for providing us a forum to discuss this kind of stuff. Um, thank you. Thank you, Howard. Um, I think what Janine was next. Hi, Janine. Hey, Aretha, thank you. Uh, this is my first TechSoup meeting. So glad that I found you. Really appreciate all the advice out here. It's like, oh, I have found my community here. Uh, Alex, thank you for your nice comments about how do you avoid burnout and everything that we're doing to save the world, you know, make it a better place. So um, my question that I want to put out there is I have struggled for about three years, really hitting a brick wall on um, trying to find a member management system that can help us learn more about our members. We um, are based in Washington, D.C. We're focused on climate change solutions, accelerating clean energy sustainability, have an international network work about a reach of 8,000 people so far and just trying to you know help you know all the people we are connecting in Italy or in Denver you know how they can help to connect and uh, really assist us on our mission so we've looked at member pro which um, we have a wordpress site we're trying to think if that was something we could use but yeah it, it just too much friction, just too complicated for people to use. So we're looking for seamless, you know, kind of functionality, make it easy as possible. We also looked at something called Buddy Boss. Uh, again, just eh, wasn't quite doing it. And then other member management systems like Wild Apricot, oh, they, they just seem so expensive for where we are right now, several hundred dollars a month. So if anyone does have advice, uh, I'll put my email in the chat or you know, feel free to put it out there. Thank you, uh, Aretha, and I uh, really uh, appreciate being part of this group and, and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, I appreciate you saying that. So um, we're gonna go to, since I heard from Susan and I don't, I'm known for last I rang Shalina. I'm gonna put you on hold for a quick second. I'm gonna to go to, wait, did Carol speak already? Carol. No, no, not okay. yet. Go and Carol. I know it's funny because that's uh, I somehow I logged in on my husband's Zoom. So thank you. Um, thank you really for doing this. This is just great because I'm an executive director and sole employee. And so I work alone and, you know, whatever. Um, but so these are a lot of great ideas. And um, we've always worked. For, so I work for a couple of different nonprofits. And um, my main one is national. But, so we've always been virtual because um, and the board engagement thing, I have to say, I think Zoom has been kind of good for that. We use breakout rooms a lot in our meetings. And um, we started out as a camp. So I always try to bring some fun camp kind of games to my board meetings, even though we're all a little older. Um, but they love it. They love making jokes and whatever. Um, so I was one of the ones also that responded to the fundraising thing because my board is super engaged typically and very active in, in working programs, which is great. Um, they're very hardworking. They don't really get the money piece about. So we're trying to um, create more programming that can bring in funds. Um, but we also need to have some other funding coming in. And that is a struggle for us is how do you, you know, so some of them give, give financially also and also work hard and others feel like their hard work is enough. And that's true. But we, you know, how do you, they're the ones that have the connections really for finances. And so that is a, that is a struggle. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So we have about 10 minutes left. I'm gonna go to Susan, then Jim, then Shalini. Hi everybody, I'm Susan, different Susan with Nonprofit Wellness and uh, wanted to address Alex's question on burnout since that's what we specifically deal with. I've spent 25 years in the nonprofit world and my partner Taisha is a longtime educator. And so we focus on nonprofits and schools because there's a ton of stress and not a ton of wellness resources. Um, 
I loved what Lini said in the in the chat about we get used to being singed around the edges in this world in this work, but nothing can dampen our passion, right? That's what keeps us going. And you know, I think Alex and for everybody, EDs are a lonely bunch. Like we're we're not peers with anyone in our organization. So groups like this are really important, so we can be you know vulnerable with each other and be open about our challenges. And I think for the ED, especially, you all have to figure out your own personal self prescription for stress or for burnout or for mental health or for physical health. It's different mm. for everybody. I put in the chat a link to our website, nonprofitwellness.org slash resources, where we have downloadable tools you can use with your team or for yourself. They're like discussion tools, really. Like if we talk about wellness, if we talk about physical and mental health, then we build more team health because it requires us to be vulnerable. And as Brene Brown writes about, vulnerability is really courage and that builds empathy and that builds trust. So we kind of use wellness as a tool, not just to improve our wellness because we got to take care of society's caretakers, but we also use wellness as like an organizational development tool to like spark discussions amongst your team because that's going to bring everybody closer together and that's going to help you take care of each other. We call it team care because self-care ain't going to work for this population. We're terrible at self-care. We've never been good at it. We're never going to be good at it. We're really good at taking care of other people. So let's turn that on each other and then we'll be stronger as a community and a movement. So if you're interested in our resources, please check out our website. But I just wanted to um, mention that. And also they included me on this ED chat because uh, TechSoup has a blog coming out next week about Zoom fatigue. Um, they interviewed me and other people. And so be sure to check out the blogs. Like Aretha said, there's a lot of great, great stuff out there. Yeah, Susan, I called you. Did you, you didn't get my message? See, I'm putting you on the spot. Just to, I'm just terrible <laughs> about listening to messages. Did you leave me a message? I did, I did. We'll have you come back because we all need you, okay? We'll have you come back just for the EDs, okay? I apologize. Okay, all right. Um, um, Shalini, is that right? I know I'm saying it wrong. Oh, no, it's fine. Everyone called me Shalini in school growing up. It's no problem. <laughs> um, I just had a quick address for the burnout. Um, burnout is hard. I've, I've worked sometimes 80 to 100 hours in a week when, you know, when you're starting out and you are the only staff or you have only one admin, it's hard. So um, when I reached my point of just everything falling apart, my dad gave me some advice that I took because he had a tough job too. And he said, one is to always have, make time for family because um, it's good to, to have something else to focus on. So, so as you know, we manage our time for everything we have to do for our work, but kind of budget that time you have for family, whether you are married with kids or whether it's your cousins or your parents or, or somebody, family and friends, just make that time because you need that time to de-stress. And he used a lot of hobbies. Um, and so he had tons of hobbies and he said that helped him a lot. And when you're a female and a mom, you don't have time for hobbies. So I use, sometimes I use my housework as my de-stressor, but you just have to find what works for you because something is different for everybody. And so it's hard to say what's working for you, but you have to figure out what it is and you have to prioritize that because you have to be able to de-stress in order to be who you want to be when you're leading. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to take you last. I'm going to give you 60 seconds and we're going to close out. Thank you so much. Well, I'll tell you what, um, it's hard to follow up after both of those because I was going to address that as well. And Susan said a lot of the things that I was going to address. But, you know, I think we're a lot of us are, are can relate to this. I mean, this is one of the big things in the nonprofit world right now. And we're losing great people because of it. But one of the th uh, there's a couple of things that I've done to try to help with my own situation. Number one is I set up with a number of other nonprofit leaders where I have a listen and learn session with other leaders in our area, where it's just an opportunity to just kind of vent. And you're just out, you're a sounding board and you can listen to what they're going through. And I think sometimes when you know other people are dealing with the same types of issues that you have, it may be on different levels, it kind of helps that a little bit. The other thing that I would say is, you know, exercise your mind and your body. Um, I have found through this that for me, exercise, just getting out walking, biking, getting outside and just enjoying fresh air is, is, I know it's kind of simple. It might be kind of trite, but it works for me. 
because you just need that to, to refresh and re, uh, reinvigorate yourself during these difficult times. Wow. That was, that was a good closer. That was, that was a good closer because you said a lot of things. Um, I'm so glad that you all came today and you found this helpful. I see a lot of people um, you know, putting things in the chat room. Everybody's in a different place. So what may seem simple to you may be, seem, may be harder to someone else. We're all in different areas. And so you've kind of been that sounding board, as Jim say, just come and you know, data dump and say what you want to say, free open space. You've kind of been that um, space for everybody else today. So thank you all for coming. Guess what? You all are our alumni community for the ED chat. So thank you, give yourselves a hand. <laughs> you are here, yes, yes. Thank you for coming today. Please sign up for the next ED chat. It's on the link, uh, events slash techsoup.org. We're gonna do a SWOT analysis. We're gonna do a SWOT challenge and you're gonna learn a lot more from people. You're gonna hear from EDs about their strength, their weaknesses, some opportunities that they've missed, and then some things that could threaten their organization if they don't get it right. So you wanna be at that one. So make sure you sign up. It's gonna be on a, a different platform. And there's a link that we put in the chat room for our survey. We would love to hear more about, you know, some of the, the ideas and topics you would like to hear. This is recorded. So it will be available within 48 hours, right on the events website for under ED chat. And it'll also be on our YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for being here today. I don't know what time it is where you are, but continue to take care of yourself today. Have your water, drink your water, take care of your families, take care of yourself and come back for the next one, you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. God bless you all. And bless stay you. strong. Thank you. You too, Pastor Jerry. You're never alone. Thank you. <laughs> Amen.